welcome to the session on basic concepts of hospital and nursing management you must be wondering why as nurses you want to learn about the management it is very important when you become a nurse manager ward in charge or senior nursing officer you have to manage the wards you have to plan the care organize the things and you have to manage the staff also same way in the hospital the medical superintendent has to make plans follow the policies make rules and regulations for the hospital functioning they have to evaluate and monitor therefore it is very important for hospital and nursing administrators to understand the basic concepts of management before going to the definition of the management let us learn about what are the objectives why we need to set objectives as we know when we move somewhere if there is some direction we know where we have to go what we have to fulfill then only we will be able to achieve the objectives and these objectives needs to be written although they are in our mind but still they have to be written so objectives most important thing in objectives to remember what is to be done how is to be done where is to be done and when is to be completed the target lines and the standards of achievements are to be set objectives are set because they give direction to activities what activities you will do how you will do that is the method of achievement it will help the organizational activities what resources are required where all the coordination is required then who will do it and when to achieve the results the target timelines are also set and objectives are very important to establish or written for effectiveness now you will say what is effectiveness effectiveness is degree to which an objective is being achieved suppose you have set some objective like in your hospital the objectives when they make plan they set some objectives with the activity the example you can see next year in the hospital 100% antenatal mothers who visit the anc clinic in the hospital will have institutional delivery second objective may be 100% newborns who are born in the hospital will be vaccinated immediately after birth third objective may be 50% of the nursing officers working in critical areas units will be trained for patient safety in icu out of this 50% 50% in second quarter and rest 50% in third quarter so you have seen the activity is given how much to be achieved and the timeline is given it will help the manager to do evaluation and monitoring when they do yearly evaluation of the activities or the audit of the activities they know what they are able to achieve and what they are not able to achieve so what is management it is getting the things done Get, getting the things done through whom through people underlying principle is commitment to achieve the objectives with purposeful action so that whosoever working in the hospital is able to provide quality need based cost effective patient care that is the main objective of any health institution getting the things done this is the most difficult thing for the manager because you have to get the things done through human resource and managing the human resource is the biggest challenge for any administrator therefore every administrator has to see the people who perform this work who do this activities and the task their tasks are result oriented they are 
clear about the objectives and the actions and the activities what they have to do because they have the implication on the resources what the hospital have as we know all the hospitals in our country are having limited resources so within those limited resources quality cost effective care is to be provided to the patients therefore management of manpower and management of resources and finances is very important aspect of a manager definition of management management is considered or management is the coordination of all the resources through the process of planning organizing directing controlling in order to attain the objective second definition by taylor is management is art of knowing what is to be done in the best possible way and the two basic principles here is emphasizes planning and controlling then henry fuel defines management as to forecast plan organize command coordinate and control these include all the basic functions of the manager and the last definition again it emphasizes that management is a process working with and through others to achieve the organizational goals in a changing environment it emphasizes on effectiveness and efficiency to use the resources you can see in this definition the two things the changing environment it can be changing internal environment of the organization or the external environment outside the organization and effectivity and efficiency i think if you see in all the health organizations today they emphasize on these three things affordable cost cost effective efficient and effective need based care so that patient is satisfied and patient safety concepts are taken into care management is a process we have seen in various definitions so let us see what this process involves process involves management functions that is planning organizing staffing directing and controlling then management skills there are basic skills that manager needs to possess it can be technical skills interpersonal skills or conceptual skills then management activities that is decision making critical thinking communication and various other activities then there are limited resources that manager has to see that is human resource equipment supplies and budget here you can see internal assessment that is what is the system of your hospital or a health organizations what is the culture values norms of that organization external factors that is economic factors technological political and socio culture factors so these are some of the factors of a management as a process what is the difference between administration and management there are three thought of schools one thought of school says there is no difference management is used where business activity is carried out and administration is used where academic activity is carried out this is the first thought second thought of school says administration is a wider concept which includes policy plans procedures or setting up the objectives and management execute these policies and plan which administration makes and the third one it is opposite that is they say management is more comprehensive they carry out all the functions of the management and administration executes the actual work to achieve the objectives so this is the difference between administration and management as per the school of thoughts what are the features of management first most important feature already we have discussed management of is a process it is getting the work done from others manager need to perform functions of management 
management is a social process why it is a social process because when you deal the manager deals with the human resource they have to maintain interpersonal relationship with the individuals and the team member they have to understand their behavior and needs because they have to motivate them and the get the work done this is a very difficult task and very important task if manager is not able to maintain good interpersonal relationship it is very difficult to get the work done and to achieve the objectives management is a system of authority that means manager occupies a formal position in organization they have the authority and responsibility vested along with the position that means your nursing superintendent when she is promoted as to take the position she is vested with the responsibility and authority to manage the nursing services to see that all the resources are used properly and manage the staff and the quality of care is maintained she has to handle all the conflicts find out the solutions to the problems then management is goal oriented already i have told you a management any manager has to set the objectives and goal your nursing organization or the nursing department has to set objectives and goal for the nursing care what they will achieve at the end of the year then management is a dynamic process it is means innovation and creativity are essential manager must implement new ideas and system to adopt to bring a change to see that with the change in the external environment with change in the policies with change in the plans they are able to adopt to the new environment management involves effective and efficient use of resources that is your human resource equipment supplies money but they have to see within that limited resources how they can provide cost effective quality care then management is interdisciplinary all the managers should have a knowledge of other disciplines psychology for interpersonal relationships and understanding the individual to motivate them to know their desires and problems economics and the finance and sociology and statistics which every manager have to carry out various functions as a they have to prepare a budget they have to do a auditing they have to do statistical analysis and the econom health economics is gaining so much of importance that they have to see that cost benefit cost uh, benefit analysis is being done then management is combination of art and science this we will get into in the next few slides management is all pervasive that means management principles are applicable all over in all the institution even if as a nursing officer you are managing a ward as a ward in charge or senior nursing officer you are managing your ward as a ans you are managing your unit medical superintendent managing the hospital even when you manage your home you follow the same principle only the application depends on the type of institution or type of the organization what you have to manage so management is science or art as we know science is a systematic and organized organized body of knowledge which is based on scientific principles which are applied universally same way the management is considered science as it is a dynamic dynamic process it has its own principles and it is applied universally art on the other hand art has its own theories and is based on practice and creativity same way management is an art it has its own theories approaches and applies methods to solve the problem so it is a mix of science and art levels of management all the institutions have top level management middle level management and your first level line managers so let us see in the 
scenario of the hospital. Top level managers, what they do? They make policies, overall plans, set objectives, set monitoring evaluation guidelines, they do monitoring and evaluation, take decisions and formulate the strategies. Top level managers are medical superintendent who works with all the head of the departments including nursing superintendent or your CNO to take decisions, frame policies, develop plans, monitor and evaluate the services and even the resources and what is the quality output outcome of the healthcare. Your middle level managers who execute the plan, they are responsible for communicating the plan and decisions to the employees, interpret the policies, coordinate the activities among various departments, assign the work to employees, arrange all the necessary resources and ensure that objectives or the goals of the organizations are achieved. In the hospital situation, if you see your middle level are your health or medical deputy nursing superintendent, heads of medical departments, assistant nursing superintendents who are head of the units. They are responsible for communicating and executing the plan, taking decision, taking the decision as per the policy and the rules and supervise the day-to-day -day working and they will see that all the resources are functional. They are available in the wards in various units so that the first line workers, nursing officers and doctors are able to provide the care. Now the first line managers. Your first line Line managers are your senior nursing officers or ward in charges or your senior CMOs who actually oversee day to day work. They monitor day to day monitoring of the staff, of the subordinate staff, progress of the patient. They see that all the resources are available in the ward. If they are not, they will demand from the middle level. They will send their request and they will see the day-to-day -day problems are being solved at the ward level. In, so in this way, your first level uh, managers, they play very crucial role in day-to-day -day functioning and they have to take decision to solve the problems of the nursing staff, support staff and other workers and they have to coordinate with the medical office. They have to see that there is a coordination among the medical officers and the nursing officers and the other staff. What is the significance of management? That is very essential to understand. It helps in achieving the organizational goals. Health organization set up the goals. First of all, I would like to explain you, we have a national health policy. Based on that national health policy, the state health policy is designed or developed by all the states. And when the state policy is circulated, the health department or directorate of health of the state, they make set objectives, they make plan for their respective institutions. That means if there are 20 hospitals, they will specifically make a plan for those hospital dispensaries and other public health activities. Then they send this plan to the hospital. Then based on those guidelines, the hospital make their plan. So over, overall, plan is based on the state health policy so that they are able to achieve the objectives. Here, they set, first they review the previous year plan, then they see what they have achieved and where are the gaps. Then they set targets for the next year. They set the objectives, they set the timeline and accordingly they give the budget to the organization. When these comes to the hospital, then hospital administrator sit together and make a plan for the hospital. So in this way, this plan actually help them to monitor the and evaluate the health activities. And the second part is ensure teamwork and coordination of employees effort in the health organization. 
manager inculcate we feeling and team spirit in the employees as we know in the health sector all the organization provide patient care as a team no individual or no individual profession can provide a complete care medical nursing allied health support staff support services unless they coordinate they understand each other they have the we feeling they have good communication among themselves the patient care cannot be achieved and the objective cannot be achieved so very essential for any manager is to see that they build a strong team they understand there is no communication gap barriers are not there conflicts are not there if there are any conflicts they are able to solve the conflicts so that team works for the patient welfare the next is ensure timely completion of work manager assured that all the work as per the guidelines they are able to achieve therefore they have to assume the leadership role use their skills management techniques and styles to take decisions take risk and take innovative and creative decision they have to cope up with the challenges that is why a manager has to be a dynamic person a person who has the critical analytical skills to handle the problems to understand the problems to understand why this problem is there what are the solutions in my hand who can help me whom with whom i can coordinate what are the new ideas or innovative ideas i can bring in to bring the change but within the cost within the you, uh, policies or the rules of the organization in any disaster condition in any conflicting situation he sh- or he she should be able to take risk that is decisions to solve the issue not depending on others that someone will come and solve my problem but able to see that the problem is solved by themselves as a team create conducive environment very essential every manager should provide positive working environment create healthy competitive feeling among the team members to increase their efficiency and motivate them to work to achieve the objectives very important factor if your manager as a manager able to provide good positive working environment where staff comes happily work for the patient care even in a stressful condition even in a constrained condition i think in covid all of you have seen how all of you have worked for the patient care because that time the aim was to provide best possible care to the patient within the limited constrained environment if positive environment is not provided the team gets demotivated they do not feel like working they will take more leave there will be attrition rate they will leave the job they will take a long leave they may take the medical leave or there will be more conflicting situations there may be more fights among themselves they may not understand your vision why you are saying something to them that's why conducive positive environment is very important open communication is very important with the employees so that they can able to reach out to you and able to solve their problems in this way in this session we have try to understand what are the basic concepts of management that is to achieve the objectives of an organization through the people and managing the resources and very important aspect is efficiency and effectiveness of the quality of the care and the utilization of the resources in the health sector resources are limited finance budget is limited that's why and if you see 
like other sectors they give some product out but the health sector gives healthy people out or people with less complications so directly no government or no organization can assess what is the output of the health sector therefore health sector managing the health sector is a very challenging situation for all the managers that within limited resources within the policies how they can provide because patient satisfaction plays very important role when any manager evaluate the care the feedback of the patients are taken if the feedback of the patient and the family is not positive every manager go back and think what was the why we are not able to get good feedback of the patient what are these issues why these issues are there in my hospital how i can improve those improve those uh, issues so that my patient is happy because patient is the face of the hospital who goes out and tell up to the other people to the community that this hospital provide quality care therefore managers nursing managers hospital managers have to be very innovative very creative could should have good interpersonal relationship good communication relationship and should have good management skills management techniques should be used and even they should have good technical skills human relations skills conceptual skills to understand the other basic concepts about the hospital what are the changing changes are coming due to various external factors economic factors political factors technological factors then only they will be able to include those changes in the hospital and they have to train their staff they have to see that their staff is communicated about all the changes what are being there in the plan and the policies all the levels of the managers have to coordinate have to communicate from top to down and down to top all the plans and policies and from down to top problem issues and various changes and if the decisions are communicated in time to everyone every all the health people workers will work as a team member provide them with conducive positive environment i hope in this way you are able to understand what are the basic concepts related to manager management you have to keep in mind as a manager thank you so much Welcome to the session on management skill styles techniques applicable in hospital and nursing management As we know in hospital all the managers are appointed in a position where they have the authority and responsibility they have to carry out various management functions therefore they need to have various management skill styles and use management techniques some of the management functions what they have to carry out are as we know planning of the activities making a plan organization of activities and resources staffing that is human resources directing and controlling supervising monitoring motivating the staff and evaluating the activities 
so in order to carry out these they need certain skills so let us see what are the management skills a manager should possess as management skills can be defined as certain abilities that a manager should possess in order to fulfill specific task in an organization management skill can be developed or learned through practical experience also these are the three important technical skills that a manager should have that is technical skills conceptual skills human relation or interpersonal skills let us go one by one first the technical skills at all levels of an organization technical skills are required technical skills are those skills that reflect ability to perform specific work task like designing a computer based staffing model or computer based rotation plan or teaching activities by a nurse manager technical skills are actually required to achieve the objectives as i have already told at the top level technical skill requirement is less at the front line level technical skill requirement is more because the front line worker our medical officers our nursing officers need more of technical skills because they are providing direct patient care our middle level require little less technical skills but because they have to see what are the various equipment how they function they have to see when they purchase it they have to see what are the various machine how they work what are the various instruments in case of emergency even they have to provide the patient care so technical skills at that level are little less but at the top level where they have to take decisions for plan and policies the requirement of technical skills are for planning and making policies monitoring and evaluation so the percentage of technical requirement technical skills at the top level is less so next is conceptual skills let us see what we mean by conceptual skills conceptual skills are those skills that involves ability to critically analyze and solve the problem manager analyze the situation and find solution to reduce the patient complaints that is one of the example skills for abstract thinking new ideas or decision making able to do assessment analyze the problem and find the solution like in a hospital suppose there is a conflict between patient and the nurses or doctors and the nurses or there is some death of a newborn so the nurse manager has to use their abstract thinking critical thinking analyzing thinking to actually analyze the records what was the situation have to take decisions have to actually see that decisions are transparent who was responsible for it rather than a blame game they have to see the actual situation then they will think what can be the solution to solve it and in future to avoid this situation again then the interpersonal skill very important skill this is actually required more at the middle level because the middle level managers have to get the work done from the top level and from the first line and the first line manager has to get the work done from the first line staff that is nursing officers so at this stage these skills are very important interpersonal skills are those skills that enable the manager to communicate the work and communicate and to get the work done from others manager guide and counsel those who performance is not up to the mark not blaming them but guiding them and doing the counseling 
and try to find out why they are not able to perform if they need training if they need orientation or if they need any change of the department motivate them and understand the individual needs so interpersonal skill especially in managing the human resource is very important your technical skills are important to understand to know the use of the equipment supplies and the need for equipment and supplies and conceptual skills are important for decision making analyzing critical thinking innovative and creative ideas so manager have to interact okay in every situation that should be clear to every manager skills for the top level managers they need planning skills creative skills decision making problem solving communication delegation critical and analytical thinking it skills listening and negotiation skills and time management skills your top level and middle level manager should have most of these skills very crucial nowadays your it skills and soft skills nowadays the soft skills include even commitment integrity of an employees it is not one of the characteristics rather it is one of the soft skills how committed you are to your organization that has taken a top position in all the sectors all over the world what are the various skills let us see in the hospitals required knowledge of industry very important how industry health industry is changing what are the new innovations coming what are the new technologies coming robotic your ar vr everything is coming planning skills delegation skills you have to delegate the work you cannot do everything yourself you should have confidence in the workers who are good workers delegate the work but be responsible when you delegate leadership and team building critical thinking decision making problem solving skill hospitals are full of problems patient related staff related resource related so this skills is very important motivational and human relation skill public speaking why because people are coming to the hospital as a public relation officer sometime you have to take over the work your it technology skills everything is computerizing over the time your reports are computerized your assessment tools are computerized stores are computerized so it skills are very important political and negotiation skills because you have to negotiate with the top managers with the first line managers and the staff political skills how politically you take decisions you are able to solve problems you are able to get the work done so these skills are very important so let us see what are the various management styles now as we know you must have also learned in your leadership there are three major styles autocratic democratic and laissez faire so management management styles every leader has a unique style of handling the employees various ways of dealing with the subordinate at the workplace is called management styles no one has a one unique style no situation actually allows you to have one unique style according to the situation according to the organization according to the responsibilities according to the human resource you have and according to the day to day activities or it is a disaster activity one has to change their management style first of all autocratic style let us see many organizations have autocratic style leaders that means top managers do not consider the ideas and suggestions from subordinate have the sole responsibility of taking the decisions employees are dependent on top managers do not have authority to take any decisions they have to follow whatever guidelines are given to them or policies they lack motivation in autocratic style of working but sometimes this autocratic style especially in the health sector during disasters is very important that time 
your manager cannot wait let me invite the people have a group meeting take their decisions take their uh, whatever they want to say ideas then i will take decision because disaster is a situation they have to be autocratic assign the duties to others they have to see that immediate steps are taken staff leave is in cancel they are invited for the they have to send a call to them to join the duty immediately because it is a disaster situation but in the routine activity if any manager is taking autocratic decision that may not be so useful so we have to see the situational situational leadership or situational uh, styles are very important to understand then is democratic style i think the word itself says democratic that means inviting welcome suggestions from all the employees employees are invited on an open forum to discuss what is good and what is bad ensure effective and healthy communication no criticism whatever suggestions are given they are taken up and employees are partner in decision making so they will owe that decision they will try to achieve the objectives in this situation they get motivated and sometimes they come out with very innovative and creative ideas also and employees work as a team here i would like to share one experience in some of the in one of the hospital where if you know everywhere opd starts by 9 o'clock but what was happening the staff was reaching by 9 30 and 10 and patients were waiting so the medical superintendent he invited a meeting with doctors and nurses discussing what is the situation why people are not able to reach there were some administrative reasons there were some extra administrative responsibilities there were some excuses come due to certain personal problems then the medical superintendent said okay you give me one time when you can start your opd so that patient do not wait and waste their time after brainstorming discussion the consensus came 915 so here you can see not the top level manager has taken the decision he involved the people who were working in the opd who have to conduct the opd that means now they are committed that 915 they will reach and start obd after 915 there will be a late attendance as we know in the hospital there are two registers with one with the routine one one in late register after late register three late there is one casual leave deduction so that is a policy of all the hospitals so here tactfully the manager has taken the decision with the democratic decision now the lazis fair here the manager do not contribute much in decision making employees take decision and manage work of their own employees are not dependent on manager and they know what is right and wrong manager do not interfere in decisions taken by the employees especially by the motivated and experienced employees but manager supervise in between and encourage team to be responsible in this situation you have must have seen in various wards the ans is confident yes my sister in charge is experienced she is dedicated she is responsible and she has the knowledge and the skill to handle day to day activities without my interference in day to day work so she will come in between sometimes to supervise the work to see how the unit is working but she will not interfere or take decision for that unit so that is less is fair let us see management techniques there are various management techniques which are used these management techniques are systematic analytic methods used for decision making efficiency and effectiveness of services planning and controlling of the activities systematic means sequence of steps are followed analytical methods to deal with each situation to achieve the objectives quantitative 
measurement in financial terms what is happening in the health sector government says health sector is not cost effective they say we give money but we do not get any product out that's why if you see health sector has to convince with the outcome of the patient progress prognosis of the patient how many days patient has stayed in the hospital how much is the cost per bed how is the cost per in the ot how what is the cost in the labor room what is the cost so cost benefit analysis cost effective it is shown by the analysis so this one of the technique is statistical technique that is trying trend forecasting that means use of the previous year's data to forecast the future data is done that's why very important to maintain and analyze the records carefully based on the judgment or opinion or experience that is delphi method also can be used one of the and the based on the trend models time series activities or techniques can be used to analyze the hospital trends managers do not know how many patients will be coming in the operation theater in the hospital they do not know how many instruments will be required that's why they have to do a forecast they have to see in the previous year how many operations in different ot's in different disciplines were done so they will forecast keeping in view 10 or 20% extra and they will demand for the equipment and supplies then activity analysis that is time motion studies designed to determine best way to complete the job that means time study measurement how long it takes an average staff to complete the star a task at a normal pace work sampling and activity analysis help to understand proportion of nursing workload how nursing staff spend their time in the ward in order to estimate nursing hours per patient you have to calculate suppose in the medical ward you want to see activity analysis of the nursing staff first you will see what is their job responsibilities what all activities they do then will you will make a checklist you will observe them how much time they take for each activity it will help you to propose for the new staff or if there is excess staff as a manager you can transfer this excess staff to a heavy ward or the department then you made even in the activity analysis gantt charts are the way of graphically show what is the progress of your work or a project determine the resources needed and lay out in order in which the task is need to be carried out what is the progress how much resources are used what all resources are required then mathematical techniques are there certain simulation studies access current and predict the future system analysis create systems and procedures inventory control supply chain and management then your linear programming and networking analysis mostly pert and cpm is used in many places then is your financial techniques this is actually used more in the health sector your dallies if you see the who reports mostly you will find in international reports the disability adjusted life years it measures the overall disease burden in the country or in the state or in the region then performance budget input of resources and output of services this is actually done even nowadays in the hospitals then input output analysis your outcome budget cost accounting analysis and cost benefit analysis the basic knowledge 
of health economics that's why it's very important for all the managers especially at the top level and at the middle level because they have to do this financial analysis in the hospital most nowadays if you see the national health documents you will find total quality management management by objective situational analysis and swot analysis very common even the government when they publish their report they do the situational analysis and swot analysis under national health mission total quality management concept has been given importance because every organization has to do a total quality assessment of their services nowadays all the hospitals all the dispensaries all the health institutions have to do swot analysis that means what are your strengths what are your weaknesses what are the opportunities and what are the threats how you can avail the opportunities using your strengths how you can overcome the weakness of the organizations and what are the potential internal and the external threats and how to overcome especially as you see the private sector is increasing very fast they are contributing a lot in the health sector and a public sector that is government sector also have to survive so a government sector has to do a sweat analysis even private sector has to do a sweat analysis because the way the government is emphasizing on the strengthening the public health sector giving so many benefits to the people do, having the insurance schemes for the people and collaborating with the private sector public sector is moving ahead in many places especially in the opd primary health care so what are the sweat uh, strengths and weaknesses of both the sectors situational analysis a organization has to do because you have to analyze the current situation keeping in view your past performance what will be my future plan how i can improve the services how patient care can be improved how patient satisfaction can be improved in many places they have do the situation analysis because in many sectors doctors and nurses are leaving and going abroad or joining the private sector or maybe from the private sector they are coming to public sector so why these so many staff are leaving my hospital i have to analyze that situation i cannot spend money only on training the new staff after every 6 months i have to retain the staff as a manager total quality management because this is a a requirement for a nbh it is a requirement for a organization to have its quality indicators so nursing excellence standards have to be maintained your standards are the evaluation criteria for the quality of care in this way in this session you have learned about what are the management skills three important technical conceptual and intellectual skills at various levels what are the management styles that is autocratic democratic laissez faire no style is permanent it depends on the situation and type of organization and then the various management techniques it can be a statistical mathematical or it is financial or various others like sweat analysis situational analysis management by objectives and quality total quality management i hope this session will make you understand why any manager should have management skill styles and use various techniques to be an effective manager to be able to achieve the objectives thank you so much